Tina, um, Demner has left Vetema a few months ago. Um, he's now um, left Vetema and it's going to be in the hands of his, um, you know, collective who are basically in charge of putting together in the beginning. We, there was always this kind of assumption that Vetema was not only one person when it first launched. We didn't really get to know who the actual lead designer was. And I think maybe after season two, then Demner started to step forward and, try to, you know, tout himself as the leader of the group. Um, but by and large, it was kind of assumed that, you know, better mark, operate a lot like Maison Margiela as a collective where they kind of came together, pulled all their resources and their creative talents in order to present this vision of fashion that they had. And obviously at the time, Vetema, you know, really shaked things up in the industry. Um, again, it was something that came from, there was, I think maybe at the time when, you know, there was a real, lot of backlash behind um, in terms of directed towards kids or brands coming in that are very amateurish that didn't really have a lot of history in the fashion industry that weren't that didn't come from a particular historical point of view that didn't have the background they didn't have the the education uh to really kind of flex their fashion muscles and i guess when you're demna and you've worked under some of the great houses and you've worked alongside someone like amazon margella um and you've kind of learned the, the tricks of the trade and you kind of, you know, you actually know how to pattern cut. Then when you come out and you're able to kind of, you know, really throw convention out the window and warp and drape and twist and mold, mold and molds kind of shape, shapes differently, people in fashion recognize it. And it was probably one of the rare brands in the last 10 years or so that's been able to appeal to the purest, the people that tune into kind of stuff like show studio or watch or read stuff on fashion law or checking on stuff like Fashionista. And it's also being able to appeal to that, the kind of, you know, proper um, avant-garde, forward-thinking fashion people who kind of, you know, swear by the house of Rick Owens, right? So that was probably one of the rare instances that was able to happen. Or that kind of worship at the feet of someone like Raph, Raph Simmons. So obviously, um, it was going from strength to strength. Demo was able to kind of, you know, um, segue that success into landing the big role at Balenciaga. And over the last few years or so, it's felt, it felt as if, most of his best work has been presented on the Balenciaga platform as opposed to the Vetema platform. Even though Vetema for me still holds a special place in my heart because again, it was a brand that really got me back in love with fashion again. Um, it really kind of got me obsessed back to reading, you know, magazines and going on fucking fashion spot forum again because I kind of stopped that for a while. But it kind of really kind of reignited my fire again in that respect. And it kind of as well came from a very particular Eastern European or Central European um, perspective that I kind of identified with, especially during the time when I was watching Gomorra. I was uh, checking out articles. I was really infatuated with stuff like the Last Panthers, uh, the Pink Panthers, sorry, the, the Jewelry Heist group from Central Europe. Um, I was really infatuated with the stuff to do with the dark web and cyber security. There's loads of things that are kind of um, just, you know, anarchist um, um, attire and point of views and manifestos. Loads of things that I kind of identify with them with. Yeah? Loads of kind of really interesting European geopolitical politics that I kind of am um, interested in. So, long story short, he got the Balenciaga job, went really well. And now, obviously, he's left Vetema. Um, but now Vetema is obviously going to be a, a platform now to support young talent, which is amazing. Um, and in general, what did this what this means in my from what I think of it is that it's going to allow Vetema to continue living way past whenever you know Demna is still here or not, right? It's just allow is that he's, he's turned Vetema into an, a kind of capsule. It's it's basically now turned into like a a Y Combinator sort of platform where you're the 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 brand, the brands of in the the kind of um in incubator are going to be bigger than the actual brand itself, right? Because why community has got such a big name, such a big reputation, such a big allure around it in the startup community. Loads of companies are going to always going to want to go to why community incubator, inc incubator, whatever it is, platform, right, and to try and get their brand some um some exposure. Um, some mentorship and stuff and you're going to always attract the best of the best because you've already got a couple of you know high high flying um scots high flying um people that went through your system so that's that's, that's a really good thing i think overall there's an article here from wwd magazine it says the following uh guram Vas vasalia guram vasalia if you pronounce the name guram vasalia guram vasilia right guram vasalia Guram Vasalia, co-founder and chief executive officer of the Zurich-based fashion house, Vetema is on a mission to help foster young talent. In a talk with Miles Soko at the Apparel and Retail CEO Summit, 
Wednesday morning at the Intercontinental New York Balakini Hotel. He spoke to, of creating a platform next year that will support young designers. His plans include setting up a co-working space within the company's offices, which is a great thing, of course. I suppose, again, it's bringing new talent into Zurich. That probably was part of their whole plan of moving over there in the first place, but that's amazing. His plans include set up a co-working space and traveling to schools to speak with students about the realities of working in the fashion industry and offering scholarships. Emphasizing the importance of show, uh, emphasizing the importance of how success is a collective effort uh, Vasilia addressed the misconceptions that a brand is defined by one time designer. Most of the time, it's probably not one person who is designing the brand. No, all the big brands, they have 60 under the designer, which is very true. And I guess it's also a good um, way to inspire the new generation of designers because it, it did feel like there was a time where the lionization of the individual talents, especially when Tom Ford was around, was a little bit um, misguided because, you know, Tom Ford, much like some of the biggest football players in the world, was a once in a generation talent, right? Because you're Tom, because Tom Ford, right? Doesn't mean everyone's going to be Tom Ford, right? There was this idea that one person could become the CEO, the CFF, the CFF, the CFO, the creative director, um, also be a, you know a merchandising genius. Like that's not not everyone can do all those kind of roles. Some people just need to be the creative and you know make the make the designs, right? Drape the clothes, pick the materials, and then they kind of use their creative teams as a way to kind of refine that image or refine that um, refine that vision that they have. And I think in general too, by and large, not everyone's going to be, you know, there's only so many head, head honcho or the main person jobs in fashion anyway. There's only so many brands out there and there's only one or two vacancies out there at the same time. But there's always going to be space for people to be part of the supporting cast, right? Be the number two, the number three, the number four. Um, the first 10 or so hires of a brand. And that, and that goes a long way to also shape the identity and the, uh, the vision of a brand and if you've got that talent why not why not lend yourself that way too there's you know you have a job for life if you and again if this fashion you actually care about and if you're really passionate about just being in the industry and having um a voice and being able to present your ideas you're not going to care if it's your own brand or if it's helping out a brand right the fact that you're able to go to fashion shows and attend glitzy dinners and see your idea go from concept to realization that's going to be enough for you so i guess it's also a good way to kind of set ground people in fashion school and also make them think like look just because you put together a graduate show doesn't mean you're going to go out and make your own name take brand this could just be a platform for you then to go and go, go do other things you could be like oh you know what? actually i want to be a model scout or a talent scout i want to be um, a producer or something right you could always go in different avenues there's so many different roles in fashion that could be done by younger people who are you know more f fixated or, or you know glued onto the idea of being a stylist a designer a photographer a creative director when again those roles are only there's only there's only so many of those roles going around but there's loads of other roles you can get in the industry that can just still provide you with a good career this is the following da -da -da -da. from um from his point of view what makes a brand um involves putting to get putting everything together you need to have the designers, the developers. It's a job that nobody really teaches all about, but it's extremely important. There is a hierarchy in my company that is more than a design job. It's commercial people, financial people, supply chain, warehousing. It's the origin certificate. It's the customs people. There is so much that comes together to create the brand, which is a very, very true. Um, it's the deliveries, the window displays. It's making everything work in the company. What we do is put the right people with the right talent together in groups and we give them the possibility to create something that is new and does not already exist. Something that is young, modern and cool, which is, I think is fucking perfect. But in order to accomplish um, that, but in order to accomplish that, uh, the team ensures that the production um team is in sync with the executing idea if all goes according to plan this platform will be introduced next year uh vasilia said the talent will not be owned by vetema gasilia said that he and his team will be like a big brother looking out for young talent and protecting them which is um similar to um what i guess comme de garçon do when they kind of you know when they uh when they just um partner up with honey dijon right in terms of like allowing brands to come in use their manufacturing and production um capabilities to kind of bring your vision to light in some respects kind of fostering talent and again, that goes a long way to essentially um, ensuring the legacy of your company too because you're always bringing in fresh new blood, reinvigorating the place. Um, they're taking inspiration from you. You're taking inspiration from them. It's a really cool idea to do overall. Um, in addition, Vetterman will be growing the company in different directions uh, with a big ready-to-wear business. The plans to start separating businesses around such around that such as ones for shoes underwear sunglasses will each have their own distribution channels. Oh, awesome. So you take your company and you create small companies around it. Really cool idea overall. Um, I can't wait to see how that goes. I think a lot of, especially a lot of the younger kids who were around when Vetema first debuted on the Paris Fashion Week's runway are going to be very 
um what do you call it encouraged by this and also want to be associated with Vetema in general i think the fact that you've got demna leaving and stepping down as creative force and you got Gurum, who's obviously the business head he's still there kind of steering the ship he's going to lend more legitimacy to it because again he was a person essentially that was able to kind of get them to print money <laughs> essentially when they made the hoodies and trainers and stuff so this is a real cool cool idea i can't wait to see what it kind of brings going forward and again it's just a cool way to expand and kind of build upon what they've done in the past right it's not an old method it's a new method co-working spaces shared offices um showing kids every aspect of fashion design of the fashion industry and not just the the kind of the glitzy stuff like the photographer and the fashion director and all that sort of stuff but the other stuff and bits and pieces that actually contribute to a, a brand actually being successful and i guess that's the thing you don't realize until you work for a big company or you work for a big brand you don't realize the amount of people that are involved in actually making the brand that you love a success and getting the shoe that you want to see or the shirt that you like in that shop actually on the shop floor. There's loads of other people that just work in the company. Probably don't have, they probably can't name, you know, more than two designers. They probably don't give a shit about what, you know, Paris Fashion Week, but they are integral to making that company tick. Um, and again, I think, if, imagine if you're a kid and you have a passion for fashion and you also like do supply chain stuff, your options are, unlimited really you could go to you go to any company you want in the world and they'll go and they'll grab you, you know what i mean they'll cut, literally uh snap your arms off um what else is next tia 